Let's talk about the Premier League Match Week 12. Hey everyone, it is Finn here and welcome back to my channel. And of course, if it is not welcome back to you, please consider subscribing so that it is welcome back to you next video. But of course, today I will be discussing and predicting everything for the Premier League Match Week 12. And I can't believe we are already a third of the way through the season. It's gone by so fast. But there are some insane games in Premier League Match Week 12. We've got Leeds United versus West Ham, Wolves versus Aston Villa, Villa, Everton versus Chelsea and of course the Manchester Derby. What an exciting week it's going to be with absolutely no breaks. Talking about no breaks, I've been working very hard on this channel as of late. So once again, if you're not subscribed, please do consider doing so and hit that like button down below so that YouTube knows that you like my content and it shares it to more people. But you know what, that being said and done, let's get into the predictions. The first game of this Premier League match week will be an exciting one versus Leeds United and West Ham United and this is going to be such an exciting game and I can definitely see there being a lot of goals because both teams rely heavily on their attack. We've seen that from Leeds United and West Ham United. It's both of their team's strong points in my opinion and as you guys can see I think West Ham United will probably score more goals and end up getting the win. That's kind of how football works and I'm partially saying that because looking at Leeds United once again Again, I sound like a broken record, but defensively, they just need to start defending smarter. They just need to get in the right positions. They need to track back better because there's still a bit of miscommunication in the back. But saying that, I do think they'll get a goal because midfield-wise, they create chances. Attacking-wise, once again, Bamford looks brilliant. He just needs to convert one or two more goals. But I think he could score against West Ham. But despite that, obviously, as I said, I think West Ham will win because they've just looked brilliant overall this season. And obviously, a week or two ago, they lost to Manchester United. And in all fairness, I think they were the better team versus Manchester United. The goals they conceded were just wonder goals from Manchester United. They haven't looked bad at all this season. And in terms of a player to watch, I think it's probably going to be the likes of Bowen because looking at him throughout the season, once again, his numbers aren't incredible, but he is so fast, he is so dangerous, and he's very tricky on the ball. And versus a shaky defense, I can definitely see him making an impact. Next up, we've got Wolverhampton Wanderers and Aston Villa. And guys, this is a tricky one to predict because both teams' forms are a bit weird, to be honest. I mean, looking at Aston Villa, for example, as you can see, I've given them the win in this. I think it's a bit of a shock prediction because looking at Aston Villa, beginning of the season, they looked brilliant, but they've definitely fallen in recent weeks and I don't know what's wrong with them. And saying that, looking at the likes of Wolves, I also don't know what to predict for them because beginning of the season, they started off brilliantly but they've just lost 4-0 to the likes of Liverpool. Their defence was shocking in every way possible and they still don't have Jimenez in the striker position. So I don't know, they're just not looking good in total. So I do think the results could really go either way. So I have gone for Aston Villa on this occasion just because Ross Barkley should be back in that midfield position. I think he could be a game changer. And until Wolves figure out what to do without Jimenez, I do think Aston Villa will be the stronger team. And obviously, player to watch, as I said, Ross Barkley will be back. Now, of course, I could make the player to watch Jack Grealish and Ollie Watkins. But you know, that would be the same old story, a bit boring. So, you know what? I'm going to say Ross Barkley will make the difference. Third game of this Premier League match week will be between Newcastle United and West Brom. Ah, the game of the century, the game everyone will be paying to watch. But of course, jokes aside, I do think Newcastle United should get a comfortable victory in this. I'm saying should because they've been a bit topsy-turvy this season. You don't necessarily know what's going to happen. I feel like they should be doing a lot better on the table compared to what they are currently doing with their team. I mean, they've got a really experienced defense. They've got decent midfielders and they've definitely got one or two superstars in their attack. But you know, it's still very early on in the season. Anything can still happen. And saying that no matter what their form is, I still think regardless, they will beat the likes of West Brom. Because looking at West Brom, yes, attacking wise, they do create a decent amount of chances. John Stone looks good between the goalkeeper posts, but they just haven't been in good form at all the season. They really are struggling and they've just lost 5-1 to Crystal Palace, which I mean, you have to be kind of special to be able to do that. I don't know. They just really have to pick themselves up. And looking at them, they also don't have Pereira 
for this game versus Newcastle because he did get a red card in the previous game. I, look, I don't want to stir any pots, but I don't really think it was a red card in my opinion. But you know what, without Pereira, the midfield falls apart for me. I think he holds that midfield together. So regardless, I do think Newcastle United will win in terms of a player to watch. It's either going to be St. Maximum or the likes of Wilson. And with Wilson's current goal scoring form, I do think it will be him. The next game this Premier League match week will be the biggest game this match week. The Manchester Derby. Manchester United at Old Trafford versus Manchester City. Sixth place versus seventh place. I think absolutely anything can happen. Looking at this rivalry over the last five, ten years, it has always been a very close contest because, of course, it is a very intense rivalry between these two teams. And looking at both of these teams in terms of their form, Manchester United in the Premier League has not looked bad this season. But they have struggled with home form. So hopefully, I don't know if they'll struggle versus Manchester City or not. Yes, I know they were just knocked out of the Champions League. But I'm at least glad that United are in a competition. They might have a chance of winning now. Or at least get to the semi-finals, you know. But in terms of Premier League form, Manchester United have not looked bad this season. Yes, I know that we've left some victories until late in the game. But a win is still a win. And versus Manchester City... I don't think Manchester City are going to walk over United this time around because so far this season, yes, they've only lost two games, but Manchester City haven't had any wow performances that we normally get from them. So I do think they need to start picking up on that. Yes, I know in terms of attack, they've had moments without Jesus and Aguero, but I don't know. There's just something missing from Manchester City in my opinion. But I do think it will obviously be a very close contest. I do think it will be a draw, obviously. I think it will be that intense. And in terms of a player to watch, I don't know. I would love to say Sterling because I love that rivalry between Sterling and Juan Bissaka. I'd like to say Bruno Fernandes, but to me, Kevin De Bruyne just takes the cake. I can't wait to watch Bruno and Kevin De Bruyne in the midfield position, but I'm going to say Kevin De Bruyne. Obviously, in my opinion, the best midfield Fielder in the world and in terms of set pieces I think set pieces will be very very important in this game and I think Kevin De Bruyne will deliver now by the way guys if you want to know who I think will win the Premier League this season obviously these are two very strong teams I have done a collaboration with tactical manager TV where we spoke for about 20 minutes about what we think about the top Premier League teams where we think teams will place and who we think will win so please check that out in the I thingy up above if you are interested didn't see that. The next game is going to be another huge game. Everton versus Chelsea. And as you guys can see, I think Chelsea are probably going to get a win in this. And I actually don't know if I think Everton have any chance of winning this game. Because looking at Everton, I don't know. I think we might have overrated them in the beginning of the season and given them too much hype. Yes, they looked strong in the beginning of the Premier League season. But they've only won one game in their last seven. I don't know if they've actually been that impressive. The only big team they beat in the season was Spurs in the first game of the Premier League season but ever since then they've gotten wins versus small teams and I don't know if they've been that impressive to be honest I think they've got fantastic individuals in their team but in terms of the team performance going forward I don't know if they've been that impressive I think Hamas Rodriguez I think he has another level to step up to same with the likes of Richarlison I think Dinier has done a decent job and I think obviously Calvert Lewin has looked fantastic in the striker position but as I said some great individuals but I don't know I think the team performance lacks a tiny bit and versus Chelsea a team that's really in form I don't think Everton stand a chance I think Chelsea will get a pretty comfortable win because I would say along with Spurs and maybe Liverpool from time to time probably the best team in in the Premier League. I think the amount of depth they have in their squad is dangerous. Obviously, in terms of a player to watch, I will have to go for a Chelsea player. Now, I would love to go for Ziyech, but apparently he might be injured for this game. So, I'm actually going to go for a new player in the likes of Olivier Giroud. I mean, to be honest, going into the season, I would say Giroud would be the third choice striker for Chelsea, but he's actually been the most informed striker for Chelsea. I don't know. I think he's such an underrated player, and I think that he could probably get a goal or two versus that Everton defense. Southampton versus Sheffield United is next and I think this is actually going to be a fairly easy one to predict. Yes, if you asked me last season this time who I think or who I thought could win this fixture, probably would have gone for Sheffield United. But looking at them this season, I can't see Southampton losing this one because Sheffield United have been in such poor form so far this season. They've lost 10 of their 11 Premier League games. I'm sorry Blades, but there's absolutely nothing impressive about you this season. Yes, McBurn 
certainly has had his moments from time to time in the striker position. But as a team, it's been pretty woeful. And versus Southampton, I can only see Southampton winning because they've looked really impressive so far this season. I mean, they've spent time at the top of the Premier League this season, although they're not there anymore. I think their midfield players are great. They're creating the necessary chances and winning the ball back. Striker-wise, Danny Ings is back from injury and that is huge for them. McCarthy obviously once again looks like a rock star between the posts. In terms of a team, Southampton just took a mile better, a hundred miles better in fact and I can't see them losing it and in terms of a player to watch obviously a Southampton player I'd love to say Danny Ings because he's back from injury but you know what I want to see if he can pick up on form first so I will go for the likes of Ward Prowse who I mean yes skill wise he's spectacular set piece wise probably the best in the world but he also wins the ball back in the midfield I don't know to me he's one of the most complete players in the Premier League if not the world and I think he'll definitely be one to watch in this fixture next up we've got Crystal Palace versus Tottenham Hotspurs which looking at Crystal Palace they just got their biggest away win ever in the Premier League with a 5-1 win over the likes of West Brom I'm very impressed with them attacking wise as I've said the season they actually look very good I mean Ben Teke even scored two goals in that game which if you told me a Belgian striker would score two goals in one game for Crystal Palace I can definitely tell you that I would have gone for Michi Batshuayi I don't know attacking wise I've been so impressed with Palace so far this season they actually do look like a very good team even defensively as I said they've made mistakes this season but you know all overall I think the team's actually looking very very good but despite that I will still obviously give them a loss versus Tottenham Hotspurs yes I know I just said Palace have played very well but versus Tottenham Hotspurs there's not much any team could really do to be honest I just think in my opinion as I said Spurs probably one of the best teams in the league at the moment and they are just good on every single level I just really can't fault them they look so impressive attacking wise defensive wise and Jose Mourinho wins it his way yes I know Spurs don't always play a very exciting game of football but you don't need to play exciting football to win matches. And Jose Mourinho does know that. And I think he will know how to win versus Crystal Palace. Now, obviously, I would say the only thing Spurs have to be careful of is Crystal Palace's wide attacking style of play because they can get a few deliveries into the box. But, you know, at the end of the day, not too much of a struggle. I think obvious win for Tottenham Hotspurs unless there is a shock result. And in terms of a player to watch, you know how it goes. It's either going to be the likes of Harry Kane or Human Son. It's just a boring story at this point, but it is going to be Human Son in my opinion. I think his pace is going to be crucial, and I think that he could probably set up a good ball or two for Harry Kane if need be. The third last game of this Premier League match week prediction video, which by the way guys, if you have enjoyed up until this point and you're not subscribed, once again, please do consider doing so. Trying to reach 900 subscribers before the end of the year, I would really, really appreciate it. But looking at the third last game, Fulham versus Liverpool, oh no, what is he going to predict? I know it might be a shocker, but I am going to go for Liverpool on this one. I don't know, looking at Fulham, I do feel a bit sorry for them because they've had a few very rough fixtures as of late and they've had some very tough games over the last month or so so I do think they'll be tired I do think it is a team with a lot of potential in it I think it's got some great players that have potential to perform well but versus Liverpool I mean come on I think it's going to be pretty one-sided looking at Liverpool even with so many injuries they just look unstoppable they just got a 4-0 win versus Wolves attacking wise they look brilliant defensively they still don't look bad and even without Allison, now that they've got the youngster Kelleher in the goalkeeper position the Irish goalkeeper he had a very good game overall I don't know man as a Manchester United fan it does break my heart but I just know Liverpool are going to end up winning this one and in terms of a player to watch oh no which player is he going to choose it's going to be a Liverpool player and I think it's probably going to be the likes of Mo Salah nine goals in ten games looking very good this Premier League season and to be honest I can see a hat-trick in this game we get to the second last game of this Premier League match week which is Arsenal versus Burnley and as you can see I've given Arsenal a pretty comfortable win in this now the reason I've given Arsenal a win in this no it's not necessarily because I think they're a lot better than Burnley but because they need to get a win I genuinely can't see them losing any more games or drawing any more games they've only won one game in their last seven games they have looked horrible as of late and that one game that they won in their last seven was the game where they got a penalty versus Manchester United I don't 
don't know Arsenal, at this rate you actually look like you could get relegated. It is scary, but the reason I've given you a win is because you so desperately need it. I can't see you losing any more games. And versus Burnley, I don't know. I think their defence has been spectacular, but Burnley haven't looked good this season. Attacking wise, they've got no attacking presence. But my only concern for Arsenal is Nick Pope and his form versus Arsenal's attack. It could be a really weird matchup, but as I said, I think Arsenal probably could slip in one or two goals. And in terms of a player to watch, I don't know if I want to put a Bamiang or Lacazette because they've been abysmal this season. So in terms of a player to watch, I'm actually going to go for Tierney in the left back position because in my opinion, to be honest, the most creative players for them so far this season has been Tierney and Bellerin. The flanks in the fence and I think that they could potentially be the difference in this game. I don't know, Arsenal. You just... <laughs> uh, I don't know, guys. You just need a win. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally gotten to the final game of this Premier League match week. What an insane match week it looks to be. But Leicester City versus Brighton is how we will end it off. And obviously, I have given Leicester City the win in this. But I don't know if it is guaranteed. We've seen one or two funny performances from Leicester City so far this season. But you know what? Leicester City have gotten some big wins versus some big teams this Premier League season. And if Leicester City want to be title contenders this season, a game like this, these are games that they need to win versus teams like Brighton. Obviously, I think Leicester City have a lot of quality in their team, but once again, like Manchester United, they leave it too late in the game. Obviously, final um, minute goal from Jamie Vardy versus Sheffield United. I don't know if Leicester City actually looked that impressive in that game, but once again, versus a team like Brighton, I think they should get the win. But looking at Brighton, look, they haven't looked that good this Premier League season, but in their last two or three games, they haven't actually been that bad. Obviously, they just lost to the likes of Southampton, but before that, they got a draw versus Liverpool and a win versus Aston Villa. So this could be a tiny bit of a shock result, but I do think I will go for Leicester City just because Brighton are still struggling to create chances and attack in the final third. And in terms of a player to watch, obviously I could go for Barnes or Vardy again, but I think it will be James Madison because I think in a game like this, I do think control in the midfield is what will win a game. And I think James Madison with his technical ability will show that he is the man to win it. Now guys, that will be the end of this Premier League match week prediction video. I hope that you have enjoyed it up until this point. Once again, if you're not subscribed, please do consider doing so. It means a lot to me. And do like this video down below. But guys, I hope you're all doing super well. Obviously, I do love and appreciate every single one of you. As always, enjoy your Premier League match week 12. Fin, F Y double N, love and appreciate every single one of you. Goodbye, enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know brain, Marvin Devine. Uh, I'm saying bye to all the lies and all the times you cried, saying that I wasn't right, yet I was right by your side. You manipulator, playing games, your friends.